your weakness as a marketer. As a marketer, it is important you know your strengths and you know your weakness. You know how far your strength can carry you. And you know how much your weakness can either bring you down. Now, when you know your strength, you know your weakness, you know how to set your daily goals. You know how to plan your day. And you know how to use your A to attain your objective. Because the strength of A can never be the same as the strength of B. So when you know your own strength, you know your capacity, you know how to manage your day so that you should be able to attain your objective. There are people that have capacity to pitch for eight hours without even relaxing. There are people that when they pitch for four hours, they have to relax when they continue. Don't take your strength and compare it to somebody else's strength. And don't take your weakness and compare it to somebody else's weakness. Every individual should know their strength and their weaknesses. It's very, very important. Are you excited? Yeah. Number one, you know that as a marketer, the more persons you meet in a day, the more things you are going to meet. Therefore, when you know that for you to meet a lot of persons in a day, it will require you talking. Therefore, you must manage how you talk with one particular person. Because the energy that you have has to carry you throughout the entire day. Therefore, you must know how to manage yourself so that you will not be overwhelmed and waste your energy with one person so that you know, in order that you might not have power to meet the next person or energy to meet the next person. So you must know how the more persons you meet, the more things you are going to meet. Therefore, schedule yourself. There are people that can stand at least a plan of average from the beginning to the end without sitting down. There are people that don't have that strength. Therefore, manage yourself. Manage your time. Number two, enthusiasm, verbal and non-verbal communication. There are people that, when it comes to preaching, they have more of verbal communication, less of body gesture. There are other people that have more of body gesture and less of verbal communication. While there are other people that have more of non-verbal communication and less of verbal communication. These are three things. Now, verbal communication is simply talking like, Good morning, you know, my name is Stephanie from CSME Company, you know. Non-verbal communication is like, oh, you know, this desire, you know, is very good, you know, in case you have, you know, you know, that's non-verbal, you know, being enthusiastic. So there are people that will talk more and less of body gesture, and there are people that will do more of body gesture and less of the talking. You must know where you fall. You must know where you fall. So that you don't go and copy somebody's strength. And you are weak in that area rather. Like but you must know whether you are that kind of category whereby you have more of body gesture and less of talking, or more of talking and less of body gesture. But as a marketer, the two have to go together. So you have to try to find a balance. In order for you to make things happen, you have to try to find a balance because the two go together. The next thing I think about what your body gesture. How far can you use your body gesture? There are people that when they start in the morning because they are fresh, they are very enthusiastic with their body gesture, you know, the way they move their body gesture. But when it's getting to, excuse me, when it's getting to afternoon, their enthusiasm, their body gesture, everything goes down. When you know that in the morning you have more strength for body gesture and in the afternoon it is less, try to balance it up. Try. In the morning, don't overuse your body gesture. Let it be a balance. So that you don't get weak before afternoon. Because sometimes in the morning you start meeting with positive personalities. And in the afternoon you start meeting with negatives or passive. And meeting with those positive personalities for you to transform the need that body gesture. They might be your finishing oil in the morning. And there are days that you start in the morning with negative personalities and passive personalities. But in the afternoon that you start meeting with positive. And maybe you have already finished your enthusiasm in the morning. So they should try to be able, try to understand your strength and your weakness so that you can be able to balance it off. Don't go in the morning, you are enthusiastic, you are enthusiastic, before afternoon, enthusiasm is gone. But it might be in the afternoon, that's when you start meeting with your positive personnel. That's when you start meeting with your prospects. Try to find a balance. I don't know whether you're understanding me. Yes! You know, sometimes in the morning, now, your enthusiasm, but when you start getting to 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, it's weak. Because in the morning, you overwork yourself. They try to balance it. In the morning, you know, just be using it gradually so that in the, before evening is still there, they see that balance. Don't know about work one and then you're quick in the other area. Know your strength and your weakness. The next point, I thought your appearance should captivate and not be a talking point. As a 
marketer. Your appearance should be to captivate your personnel. It should not be a point of talking. You know, sometimes when you approach somebody, it's not for the person to focus on your message. The person will keep your appearance. Like, why is your shirt up and down? Why is your this up and this? Why is your breast outside? Are you here to seduce me or you are here to talk to me? You realize that what? You are not spending time talking about something that you would have fixed it in the house. Because if you had fixed your appearance in the house, the person will not be talking about it. If the person will focus on the message. So if you know that you need to make more juice, build your appearance at home. Don't carry it down to the field. Where you instead be a talking point between you and your person because that will help you to waste time. And at the end of the day, you might lose attitude. Those that don't have attitude. Your personnel can negatively your appearance or do you lose attitude? Yes, because when the person is talking, other people are coming to listen, they are coming to see. Hey! Now so they do! Now so ya! Now so they do! Topic has changed. But that is something that you have fixed your appearance at home. So that it will not be a point of negativity. The next thing, proper orientation of the mind in terms of having spirit of discernment is very important. You need to orientate your mind every day that there are three types of personnel you are going to meet. You are going to meet the negative personnel, you are going to meet the passive personnel, and you are going to meet the positive personnel. You need to orientate your mind so that when you meet negative personnel, it will not be like a new thing to you. Because the when you meet negative personnel, they are so angry. Yes, but it is normal to meet negative personnel when you are properly orientated your mind. When you meet a negative, you say, thank you, have a nice day, will not bother you. But when you have not programmed that in your mind that you are going to meet negative, when you start meeting them, especially in the morning, it can spoil your day. Sometimes we meet more of passive personnel than even the positive personnel. And if you don't orientate your mind properly to have spirit of discernment, you know, okay, this is a passive, thank you, have a nice day, see you next time. You will remain there. You will be thinking that maybe you can transform the person. You will be remain there. You will remain there. But rather, if you have already your mind, when you know it's a passive, we are spirit of the same and say, thank you, have a nice day, and you write off. Because you have more prospects to meet. So you need to orientate your mind every day that you are going to be with negative, passive, and positives. So in case you meet with any of this class of people, you will not bother you. Attitude towards negativity versus positivity is very important. Know your strength and your weakness. How far can you endure a negative situation? When you encounter a negative, two things are involved. There are two types of negative. Let me first of all say this. There are negatives that are working for you and there are negatives that are not working for you. A negative that is working for you might be questions about certain products that a person wants to know before purchasing the item. And a negative that is not working for you, someone will tell you that, oh, you know, uh, uh, I love you, please go off this camera and you waste your time there. So, you must ask your mental attitude, how well can you enjoy that negative? When you meet a negative that is not working for you, simple, cut the stock short. Thank you, have a nice day, see you next time, ends. Rather than standing there, listening to the negative, consuming the negative and then allowing it to overtake you. And now you go and sit somewhere, you are confused. You see what this person is saying, is it right or wrong? What do I think? Should I write on, should I give up? Should I do this? Should I do that? Sometimes the best way to avoid a negative situation is to say thank you and have a nice day. You go. Rather than standing there, listening to the negative, consuming the negative, and at the end of the day, it overwhelms you. What about your uncle? Flip that thing downstairs. That <laughs> overtake you. Why you meet somebody that overappreciates you? You think that you are killing it. Yes! There are positive situations that you can allow you to think overtake you and you think that you are doing it. You are doing it. Whatever you come by here, four piece. So, but that four piece not my problem because somebody encouraged me today. And without encouragement, eh, me and another will go far. I will, you go and sit. Somebody will encourage you from, from one o'clock to three o'clock. You said that I was a positive person. What are you listening from that person that you are not heading for? Telling is essential. So, there are negative that will overtake you and there are positive that will overtake you. You meet a person that says that. Let's just be discussing my child wants to buy something and come back. We'll bring change before we'll buy. Now when the child puts and come back, another situation has happened. And the person ends up not collecting the item and you lose your attitude. They will be positive. So don't allow negative or positive to overtake you. My last point, I said it is a norm, it's a game of numbers. 
Yeah? Yes, every, <coughs> every day is a game of numbers. Therefore, it should not bring you closer to a yes. With marketing, there is nothing like a touch. The way you point out this is a positive. This is a negative. This is a passive. It's a game that you're playing. You meet more people, and in those small people that you meet, 10 personnel equals to one sale. 10 personnel equals to one. So it's a game you are playing. And now you can play that game, you reach on number 10. Instead of number 10, you take number 10, you take number 11, you take. So it's a game of numbers you are playing. Let's say you're playing Lodo, you're playing card, you don't know who will win until match is over. So marketing is a game of number. When you are playing the game, always try to be on a winning side. Losing should not be for you. And let me tell you, for you to be on a winning side must be how you orientate your mind. You know sometimes you are playing a game, just say you're mad, I don't even know you go win me. Nothing will happen because you already said it. You already conceived the idea. You already have that mindset that the person will win you and I thought the person will win you. Then you have a mindset that uh, it is a game and I don't need to lose. You know that some games are taken seriously and some other games are not taken seriously. For example, if you are playing Ludo with somewhere that you are putting 500 down, it can't 1,000. See, you are not joking that game. You play it with all those guys and at the end of the day you will win. But it's a kind of game that rain is falling and you just want to have fun. They yeah, win you know when you say cold bedrooms are going swimming. So these are two different types of games. You must choose that day. In this kind of game, I am the one to win because I need to suck some money from here and put this in my pocket. Therefore, you are not supposed to joke. Because when you go out there, you joke, they will win you. So it's a game of numbers and each don't bring you closer to a yes. When you are playing a no, the next one should try to be a yes. Because that's what, what the extent of success says. That each no bring you closer to a yes means that if you meet a no now, your next prospect should be a yes. Don't keep beating a no, 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 I say it's normal, no. You must check your natural smile. Check your eye-to-eye -eye contact. Check your body gesture if it's still available. Understanding your strength and your weakness is very important. Because when you understand this too, you will balance your day and you will make juice. Clap one, clap two, clap three. So I want to encourage everybody today. As you go out, go out as a combatant. Go out with a mindset of winning. A mindset to win, not a mindset to buy lose. It's a game, so you must be on the winning side of this game. Eh? You must be on the winning side. Because if you're not on the winning side, then the person is on the winning side. So try to be on the winning side. Nice way.